Hey, I'm uh, here to talk to you about something that was in all of your bags. Um, so in, in your bag, you've probably thrown it away already or you've used it as a, as a uh, uh, hand wringing item was something we call the way of AI. It looks like this. It also had NGA's uh, schedule in it, right? So um, if you have it, go ahead and get it out and I will read from the first chapter, <laughs> followed by him 101. You guys think I'm kidding. <laughs> Vision statement, chapter one. No, so um, it's very difficult uh, for our agency to kind of distill down what we're trying to do with artificial intelligence into just a few pages. It, it has to be done, you have to clarify, you try to um, get the message repeatable, you try to get people to understand it, you try to get leadership to convey what's important, what we're trying to do, you try to convey it to industry, right? I'm trying to convey this here to you today. What's interesting about what we wrote about, we started about a year ago, finished maybe six months ago, uh, published it, went through all the approvals, the director signed it, uh, to the point where now this thing's about a year old, right? To present that at this conference, while it's, I wouldn't say it's stale, it's fascinating and awesome to see what's already happened since the first day that Nick Steshko began writing this with us. Nick is around here somewhere. And kind of what the state of the art is on the floor. You know, I've been through a, a few demonstrations today. Um, I've seen things that have been fascinating. I've seen things that are progressive. I've seen things when, when we started having this conversation a few years ago, um, sort of 2017, 2018, where almost every vendor had a YOLO model, for those of you that follow this, and every vendor was doing some kind of demonstration. Maybe it was just a, a quick model that they built on SageMaker. No offense to AWS, they are my good friends. Uh, to where we are now, four or five years later, it's really, it's really taken off. Um, and we're especially intrigued by the breakthroughs that have happened in the last couple of years. Uh, I had the opportunity, and I, I mentioned this earlier on, on an earlier panel, so I apologize for repeating this, but I had the opportunity to sit uh, in a round table with the directors of the agencies, uh, Avril Haynes, the DNI, and the executives of several of the uh, sort of emerging big uh, AI companies. And, you know, what's really happened in the last year, I guess from ChatGPT 3, 3, 5 to 4, is this fascinating and what they would say alarming rate of increased capability. Uh, some of them so alarmed to the point that you guys know that there are folks that have uh, even called for a pause on this. Now, can you imagine, right? This, I'm a technologist in NGA. I was the former chief technology officer in NGA. I felt like every day of my life was battling bureaucracy. You know, it was battling um, uh, obstacles, policy, especially procurement policy, right? And acquisition policy, God bless you guys. Um, for someone to come along and say, hey, we should pause what you're doing right now because it's so good. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's sort of not, not in, um, it's not in my DNA. I think it's not in a lot of your DNA that are, that are here that are battling to, to do better, to make things, to produce things, to increase the um, efficiency uh, and, and outcomes of your product. So we're not, we're not pausing. Um, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency is not pausing. I don't think the Department of Defense is pausing. And I say this because we're still not good enough. Um, when we sort of measure where we're at, uh, specifically, you know, our agency, NGA, specifically concentrates mostly, the preponderance of our investment is in computer vision. 
machine learning in the domain of computer vision, right? Being able to detect objects um, of interest, to be able to derive information from those objects, to be able to do it with better judicial accuracy, we're not good enough. That, I mean, that's, that's sort of the state of, of where we're at. I see my, my analysis friends over there, they will tell you uh, the ones that keep the watch, the ones that are um, first, first to receive uh, imagery, exploit it, tell the command commanders, tell the president what's going on, like within minutes, are gonna say we're not good enough. They're gonna say that the positive identification of the objects are not good enough. They're gonna say the speed in which they get those detections is not fast enough. I think the combatant commanders would say the same thing. Um, that we're slow, that we're not right as much as we need to be, and that we need better labels, we need better algorithms, we need better models from those, resulting in better detections, resulting in more useful information to be able to support the policymaker and our combatant commanders. So if you think you're good, if you think you have something special, this is your opportunity. Um, this is your opportunity to show us. This is your opportunity to be part of the conversation. Um, I, I will just tell you the bar is high. What we've done over the last five years is set the bar very high. In yesterday's panel, I mentioned that one of, the, one of the things we're most proud of is the environment that we have set up in our agency, in the community, to be able to bring in software faster, uh, to be able to accredit it for security faster. Um, we expect people to deliver capability now multiple times a day, always improving, Continuous integration, continuous delivery. We expect to be able to house, store, maintain more data than we ever have in the past. We have more compute than we've ever had. So the setting is right. What we've been building toward is here. The opportunity now is to excel by bringing the best, the best and brightest, which is in this room, support national security, which might not always be the case for our best and brightest in the country, um, to find novel ways, new techniques. We're really excited about this idea that we can take um, this transformer technology from large language models and apply it to images, apply it to computer vision. We see that as an emerging thing over the next couple of years where we'll see breakthrough, where we go from good to better to the best in the world. That's exactly where we want to be. I'll go back to the opportunity again. Um, it's flashed up on the screen. This is the best that we can do. We're, we're a visual uh, agency. We make charts, really pr fancy charts. So what we did is copy and pasted these URLs on some random PowerPoint 30 seconds before I started talking. <laughs> so we have these broad area announcements. Um, the top two, the ARL. Those are uh, Army Research Lab. So just Google those. Those are part of what's known as Project Maven. So the categories for the BAA might be broad. Maybe your technology doesn't exactly apply to some of those categories. It's OK. This is your opportunity to take a look at those, see what the opportunities are, submit white papers, submit ideas. Um, you know, the acquisition panel is next. That's really, that's really why everyone is here. They want to they come to the acquisition panel. They want to see the opportunities flashed up on the screen. So I'm just kind of taking their, taking their thunder, stealing their thunder. Uh, the third one, or the, the research one, is NGA's uh, broad area, uh, BAA for research. All of these are listed, apparently, on the NGA website. Um, work with us, industry. I don't, I don't think that URL's right. That doesn't look right. We did a very poor job copying and pasting. The industry.mil does not look right, but maybe it is. Should be maybe. Scott's checking right now. 
And the last one I think is an important um, for you all to know about too. We work uh, Moonshot Labs here in St. Louis and Christine Woodard works closely with Ensign. And one of the things that we are doing is we have a challenge right now to bring folks in to do synthetic generation of label data. So please take a look at that challenge. I'd like you to submit to that and uh, see if it applies to what you're doing. So with that said, we're going to turn this over to an Ask Me Anything session. And I want you guys to ask me anything about what we're doing in data and digital innovation, perhaps what we're doing in Maven or not, um, and or anything that you think that I might uh, wax poetic about per usual. So they're going to be walking around with cards, or there's cards on the table. We'll, we'll start here. Can I sit down like I'm on a panel? Are we going to sit down? All right, so Mark, you've recently been selected as the director of uh, DDI at NGA. You were previously the deputy. What do you hope to bring to the new role? Any planned pivots, or are you staying the course? So I get asked this question a lot, um, and a lot of you that have been tracking this new component of data and digital innovation, this new director at an NGA, uh, it's about, it's, it's just short of two years old now. And so in terms of the life of directorates, it's, it's the newest directorate, right, brand new. And so there's a lot of opportunity for us to shape it. And Jim McCool, my really good friend, Jim McCool, um, who actually asked me to come back into NGA uh, from industry, um, him and I were able to sort of lay the foundation for this director to get together. But everyone knew that I was the boss of Jim McCool. <laughs> so there's really nothing's, nothing's changed. Been the boss all along. So no, he, he would laugh right now and confirm that as true if he was here. He's probably texting me right now. Um, this isn't being broadcast like on the internet or anything, is it, Christy? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so, so, again, I've had, had the opportunity to kind of do the foundational piece, to organize the work, to organize the, you know, uh, establish the, the offices inside of digital uh, data and digital innovation. I'll tell you real quick what those offices are. They are um, plans, programs, and strategy run by Kerry Stone. That's, that's an office that's kind of looking forward. That's an office that's uh, uh, ensuring that our budgets are set for both um, you know, data ops and, and artificial intelligence. Um, they're, they're also the office that was responsible for publishing this strategic document. Um, the other office that's important is uh, QD, other, formerly known as the Data Core inside of NGA. It's um, DDI operations. They're all practitioners. They're data scientists, data engineers, software engineers that make and build things. And that's a very powerful component to have inside of our agency. When I don't have time, energy to pivot a contract, to, to write a new BAA, to you know, start something new, we can have those folks immediately upon tasking begin to research and build something and try something out. So it's a very, very powerful component. And then the last one, of course, is um, uh, the Maven office, uh, otherwise known as QM. Uh, run by Rachel Martin. Rachel Martin is the program manager for, for Maven as well as the office director for the office. So what's going to change? I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of communication that I have to do. Jim and I were I think good communicators about it but um, if you've seen at this conference we've, we've done a lot more talking about Maven at this conference. We're going to do a lot more talking about Maven. We're going to do a lot more talking and communicating about what we're looking for towards the, the moving moving into the future. Um, you'll see some changes sort of internally, culturally. You know, everyone's going to start wearing t-shirts. I'll, I'll draw the line at flip-flops. Uh, you, I think you'll see um, just a lot more open communication and engagement um, now that now that I'm in the directorship. Thanks for that, Mark. All right, uh, can you share any of the feedback you received from the MITRE study NGA Commission on the ability of small AI businesses to engage and do business with NGA? Yeah, I will a little bit. Um, we really, really appreciated that study. 
really appreciate it, uh, Oversight for sort of uh, getting it started and, you know, really appreciate MITRE's insight and expertise. Um, ba basically, I, I don't think there's anything uh, revolutionary in the study. What you'll find is small businesses have a hard time doing business with the government. Uh, there's a lot of cultural, there's a lot of language translation that has to happen. Um, there's uh, sometimes a divide on how you, you know, just the understanding of how you do basic business with the government. So uh, that's enduring. We have opportunities to change that um, in AI and ML, especially because of all of the new companies and all of the the emerging technology. We we have the opportunity to bring people in faster, do do challenges like the like the Ensign challenge. Um, uh, explore creatives and, and do things like that, but there's there's nothing sort of revolutionary about it in terms of um, bringing people in. It, NGA and the government has to do a better job of I identifying. That's one of the hardest things. I identifying what what's truly unique, what's truly different, what's truly special out on the floor out here, versus the kind of standard. Um, and then once we identify that be courageous enough and brave enough uh, to, to bring it in in a pace that it, you know, is extraordinary. Thanks for that, Mark. Uh, so we spent a little time this afternoon talking about the AI way. How does the AI way fit with the software way and NGA's technology focus areas? So if you're not familiar with the software way, that's another great thing to Google. Um, please Google NGA's software way. Uh, it's also, you know, it's on our websites. Take the time to read it. Um, Alex Lair, our current Chief Technology Officer, um, basically took what was the NGA technology strategy from uh, a couple of years ago and took it one level further in terms of application and kind of put the marker out there for, for you companies that are building solutions. There are measurements that we have not applied. For example, how fast you can deliver software to NGA, and how often you deliver software at NGA, quality software. Um, that's not a metric, really, that, that we track so much. For those of you that have been around, you know um, bringing software in is, you know, it's laborious. Uh, in some cases, you know, historically, it's taken two years to do software accreditation. That's really not the case anymore because of the things that we put into place. But to encourage the agency, to encourage our, our software partners that are out here today, we want to measure how fast and how often you can deliver capability. You know, gone are the days where you're doing the security patch every quarter. That's insanity. There is no company out here that would ever dream of doing business like that. Should be applying security patches every day. That you, that you need to. You should be upgrading software multiple times a day, delivering functionality. You should be working with your customer side by side, right, to discover and deliver new functionality. That's what's in the software way. Certain measures that we think will, you know, change the way we do business. And, you know, of course, the AI way, you can't deliver machine learning models. You can't deliver those every quarter. You can't upgrade the security. You can't up update labels every quarter. It's got to be every day. You are delivering new software, new machine learning. You know, it's, a, it's another one of those things with an ops behind it, ML ops. Just put ops behind it, you know, it's modern. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's, how, that's how they, it, it's machine learning and artificial intelligence is software. So everything we're doing there applies to the AI way as well. I'm sorry, the software way. Uh, are, are, what are some of the innovations you're seeing in the private sector that you'd like to see NGA adopt or adapt? I said it before, I think I'm, I'm going to foot stomp it. I'll keep foot stomping it. Um, this large language model thing is, is, is real. I think it's, it's left the hype cycle. Um, you're seeing hundreds of companies, thousands of developers take what, what's been invented in the last couple of years and begin to apply it to every business domain that they're in. 
Um, and so that, that obviously has to be applied to our domain. Um, while, while, you know, we're an intelligence agency and, and a combat support agency, we do reporting, we do language. We actually have, you know, a lot of interesting natural language uh, processing problems that we, that we use this on. And while we, we will also use that te technology for those kinds of things, English reporting and, and, you know, communicating through words, taking the sort of core thing that was invented, this transformer technology, and applying it to the visual, applying it to uh, imagery, um, you know, I am anticipating seeing you, seeing us apply that in ways that we have breakthroughs over the next couple of years. Right. Uh, what does the future of MAVEN look like, especially after the transition to NGA? Can you talk about the differences between that and Project Sapphire? Yeah, so um, actually I'll just, I'll, I'll take the thing at the end here. Uh, we get a lot of questions about, um, you know, AI programs, computer vision programs, there's about a, a dozen or so big computer vision programs out there across the department. Um, they're all valuable. So, you know, every once in a while we'll get oversight saying, hey, I want to pay for the same thing twice. You're not paying for the same thing. And here's a good example. So Project Sapphire, the ASOC, um, developing, it's a program inside of NGA where they're developing tools for analysts. And you know, that, that's super important. We need our analysts to be enabled by, by, this, by AI. And for example, they have a tool set that allows an, an analyst or an analytic team to do some labeling, to build a model, to run that model against their targets, to get the result sets and sort of test them and cycle. No one loves that problem set, that target, those objects they're trying to find like that analyst or that analytic team, they will be so concentrated on making sure that model is delivering what they need um, as a small unit to solve that problem that it's gonna get better. And you know, they'll, they'll eventually turn that into something very useful. Maven, on the other hand, has a customer set. The 18th Airborne Corps, right? The premier unit in our country that we send to find, fight ground wars. It's not an analyst. <laughs> Somebody send that to General Donahue. You are not an analyst, um, 18th Airborne Corps. It is a cohesive fighting unit with you know all these components inside of it to conduct ground warfare. That customer set is different. The, what we build for them is different. What their needs are are different than an analyst. And the feedback we get from them is different. Why would you eliminate one or the other doesn't make absolute any sense at all. Are there synergies? Is there core technology that you can share and learn from? When you have a breakthrough in an area of computer vision, will it apply to both? Perhaps, perhaps. That's why NGA is here. That's why NGA is doing both, right? Because we are an analytic organization as well as a combat support agency. Thanks for that, Mark. No, I wanted to drop the mic, but that's... Not just Probably going to be noisy. You're close. Not yet. So how do we know where the bar is set at NGA for AIML object detection performance? I, I, it's kind of, I guess it's kind of a classified. <laughs> who, who asked that? Kurt Davis, where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> he asked if he has a clearance, can he find out? I think that is something we want to protect, um, you know, kind of where we're at and, and sort of the state. Um, you know, we wouldn't want our adversaries to know exactly where we're at. Um, with that said, I said it earlier, you know, we want to be better. Um, and, uh, you know, I know we can do better. I, I have analysts, of course, that, that would expect things to be 100% accurate, right? I have com combatant commanders that would expect the object identification to be 100% and the geolocation accuracy to be two meters or less so they can deliver precision guided munition, right? Th those are the expectations. Um, I don't, you know, are we there? We're not there. Um, or will we get there? Absolutely. It's inevitable. Um, there, 
I can guarantee 100% in the future, we will be there. I don't know when, I don't know also what the path is gonna be, but we're absolutely uh, moving that direction. And that'll be the last question, because I wanna, uh, somebody yesterday in the panel, for those of you that participated in it, asked where we would be 500 years from now. Okay, that's an absurd question. I actually went home last night and told my wife, somebody asked where we would be 500 years from now. And she asked what I said. I said, I'm going to be at the family cemetery in Fultz, Illinois, which is about 30 miles south of here. That's where I'm going to be. But I can guarantee, I think my other answer was, uh, you know, hopefully the technology we're building today will keep us from destroying ourselves, which I think is true also. Um, but I can guarantee uh, within a decade, we will be 100%. 99.999%. Mark, I want to thank you for your time today. I think we all learned a lot and had a lot of fun with it.